let's look here at a couple of more examples on the form of transfer functions that we might arrive at for a couple of different types of systems. In this case, I have an example of another kind of sensor. There's a pressure that's being monitored right here. So I'm treating that as an input into this simple system where I have, say here I have some fluid inertia, maybe some resistance in that line. And I'm going to assume that it's linear. As you know, with um, fluid systems, sometimes you have to make sure that 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 that's a good assumption of it being linear in case the fluid does go turbulent. But let's say just for the purposes of this example that you did design this, and you might go back and look at it and make sure that that was in fact linear so that it would follow the kinds of trends that we're going to see here. And here we have a tank that's just a simple tank. So I, C, and R element. Classic second order system. Let's look at a transfer function. Say we were interested in the height of this tank because it would reflect say the height of the water in the ocean here because we're trying to measure tide. So in building that model here's a simple transfer function. Okay so from the causality you can see effort in and you have two independent energy storage elements. So we're going to have two states fluid momentum in the line and the volume in the tank. In deriving the equations, you have gamma dot 2, V dot 3, and two state equations here in terms of those two states that I can put into state space form. So you can pause and take a look at that, or let's continue, but you can see now we've got an A matrix B matrix here, we've got an input vector state, vector derivative. Now we want to get a transfer function because later we may want to look at analyzing the response of a particular output of interest, say maybe it is the height of this tank, to pressure or pressure fluctuations that are related to the height, namely the tide level in the ocean here. So we want to look at outputs of interest. So let's look at a possible form. So we want to study again height response. We want to look at how height is related to the state of the volume in the tank. So that gives us a real simple output equation which is reflected here, right? So here's my output Y. Here's my C matrix that I create based on the relationship between height and volume. Note it's not related to gamma 2, so I only have a term in this part of this row vector. And so this is a one by one, right? Here, this is a scalar output but still I need to define the C matrix here, the D matrix, and then the B and the C and the A are defined through linear model. The whole point is so that I can put this into my little G formula. The other thing that I've done here is related the pressure that I'm detecting as a function of the height of the waves, the, the water level. So I've got big H for that, little h for the height in the tank. So now when I get this transfer function that I'm interested in, it'll be, it'll be dimensionless, right? So you can see what I've done. Instead of putting pressure in my input here, I've converted that pressure to, so that the input is in terms of height cap H.
So now here's my transfer function defined through this formula. I know it's a scalar because of the dimensions of the output y and input, but now you can see now step by step how I'm inserting the C matrix, A matrix, B, and D. Here's my identity matrix, which is going to be a 2 by 2 in this case. It has to be the same dimensions as the A matrix. From here, it's just straight calculation. There's an inverse to compute here. 2 by 2s are easy. At the end of the day, you derive your transfer function G, which is equal to H, 3 over H. And here's your transfer function. Okay. Note that it's a second order transfer function. This is a second order system. And note what I've also done is I've used my knowledge of second order systems to define 2 zeta omega n here and omega n squared here and omega n squared here in standard form. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a future video, but I hope you can see that what I'm trying to do here is put that into standard second order form. We'll talk about those basic factors uh, in an upcoming video. As I mentioned before, a little sidebar here, once you have these ABCD matrices, it makes it very easy to go into MATLAB, define those matrices, and use it to define a transfer function with this built-in function. And from there, you can create transfer functions. And here's a little example of that. Say I define A matrix, B matrix, C, and D numerically. Then I tell it, give me a numerator definition and denominator definition. From those matrices, using the function S, S to a TF, and this is what you'd get out of MATLAB. It would tell you that the numerator has just a, um, a constant value. These are in ascending this way coefficients of the uh, polynomial. So you can see how they're defined here. 2, 1, 1. So spits out your little transfer function there. All right. Very nice function to be familiar with. Insert in here another example, mostly because I wanted to show you what do you do when you have you know, more than one input in? The examples we've seen here before has only had one input. Here I have a real simple circuit example with two inputs. One is, a, as you can see, there's a current source here and a voltage source on this side. Let's build this boundary first. I'm going to have a flow source coming in from this side with a series resistance and then a zero where that capacitor drops and this is C1 here which is R1 and this is a current source and I'm going to have a voltage here I'm going to call it V1 that represents that voltage there right that's a Q, Q.1. Now I've got the, the source kind of driving the, you know, it's positive, negative here. So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what? This guy comes in another series circuit this way. And I'm actually going to change the sign here. And I have an R, R2, I, L, Two, and that's my source coming in from the left side, right? Yes. And I'm done there. This has a lambda dot here. Call that current I two there. This is current one through here. Well, I, if I follow this convention, say I1 here, then it's actually, this is I1, but the current through here is Q.1. Okay. This is I2. That's accurate. Okay, so causality, flow source, 
to the one stop the integral causality stop oh no propagates there but then should have done the effort first right then it, it still works out this is determining flow and that gives me an independent state there and there so n equals 2 state vector q1 lambda I'll go ahead and call that lambda 2 So I'm going to get two state equations, right? And the first one is, you can see a q dot, and this is i1 here, i2. Okay, so let's write the state equation. q dot 1 is i1 plus i2 because of that sign convention. i1 is the source, i2, I'm going to reorder it here. It's 1 over L2. Um, lambda 2 plus I S of T. My other state equation is just lambda dot 2, and that is what V S of T positive, right? I'm going to space it out over here. But it's subtracting off the voltage from R2, which I know is going to be minus R2 over L2 times lambda 2, isn't it? And then the other is the voltage V1, and that's also um, subtracting off, so it's minus, what, uh, 1 over C1 times Q1, isn't it? Now, as our outputs, we're going to want 2. So we're going to want, first output is V1, which is the voltage right here, and then the second Let's take as the voltage across an inductor, which is just lambda dot 2. Let's go ahead and call that V2, which is defined that as lambda dot 2. Okay. And we're going to be able to write that, right, in terms of state. Sorry, it should be an X and somehow input if we need it. Okay, so let's write those uh, that output equation. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Well, what is V1? Well, V1 is just the voltage across the capacitor, so that one's easy. That's just 1 over C1Q1. And what is V2? Well, V2 is just lambda dot 2, so it's my other state equation. I already have that one. So what's my output equation? It's V1, V2. You want to write that in state space. Q1, lambda 2. That's a 2 by 2. And uh, there's two inputs, right? So I need to write this as a 2 by 2 here also. So you see my, my B matrix now. I wanted to show you one that's a, that's a 2 by 2 also. And that has the input IS and VS. Here uh, I have um, 1 over C, 1, 0. And here I have minus 1 over C1, minus R2 over L2. But uh, let's see, the first equation does not depend on IS. So I have two zeros here populating the B. And uh, this guy has... Sorry, sorry, I missed, um, yeah, no, that's fine. That's uh, 0 and 1 here. Um, so that's going to be my uh, C matrix there, so 2, two by 2 also. So just moving up, your A and B matrices would come out of here, right? And then your C and D would be here. And then you'd go ahead and plug that into your G of S. Okay, and what are you going to get? That that's going to be a matrix. I'm going to indicate it that way. 
So your G of S is going to be a matrix of transfer functions. Okay, you're going to get a transfer function here that's a transfer function between V1 and the first input IS. This one's going to be a transfer function between V1 and VS. And then this one's going to be V2 over VS. This one's going to be V2 over VS. And you get all of that by using the little formula. I'm going to let you finish that as an exercise. As one last example, I, I'm not going to derive the transfer function, but I wanted to show you an example of a problem that I might toss at you that I've used in this class before. And um, I like it because it mixes a few different things here um, of interest. This is a little mechanism. It's supposed to be an old-style, actually, sensor like sensor problems, but you can see this L frame is rigid. Okay, so see here, starting from this point there to this point there, it it uh, actually pivots around here. So this guy's deflect, this guy theta defines the angle. So you can imagine this guy could pitch up this way, like that. And um, this angle is um, the motion of this guy which is supposed to be a measure interestingly of the derivative of the pressure right now where's that pressure coming from imagine this this is a wall up here and this is exposed so it's supposed to be like say you had a torpedo or something and so there's fluid out here and inside here um, this little bellows exposed to this little beam, this little C-frame actually. See? A little C-frame here. So the pressure is coming in here. Exposed to this guy and then coupled into this L-frame. And so you have pressure coming in here. And what you're supposed to be looking at is say, you know, trend in pressure. Not P, but dp dt that's what the design is proposed to do you can show that this transfer function here gives you that relationship and you can derive this transfer function from a model of the system okay Let's ask you a question can you see how this indicates at least at very low frequencies, and this is something you may not know yet, but we'll talk about it, and then later you might come back and look at this, but this S up here, and this is why I wanted to show a problem like this that has an S in the numerator, actually, if you think about it, if you converted this to time domain, what would you do? You'd say theta A3 triple dot you're cross multiplying, okay, to convert to time domain. So you cross multiply A3 times 3, two derivatives, is this term, one derivative, no derivatives, A theta, A0 times theta. That has to equal to the right hand side, which is what B times P. S dot. So you see, you've got all these dynamics here. Remember, dynamics are derivatives. The static relationship is theta. So it's statically, you can see, it gives a relationship between theta and P dot. So it's exact. So theta over P dot, right, is a constant. That's the ideal sensor, but you get all this other stuff here, which is all the dynamics of this. In order to make this device, you get you get all this mess. Ideally, this is what you'd have. Ideally, modern 
in the modern world we put a pressure sensor that doesn't have dynamics, but it makes for an interesting problem anyway. If we have time, if it presents itself, we may look at this problem. It makes for a nice model, mechanical, hydraulic, nice transfer function derivation. It shows how you can process dynamic variables with a system using a lot of different energy forms. You know, you don't always, you want to take a derivative of a pressure, you don't have to do that, you know, computationally. You can actually build a system that will perform that function. Thought you'd be interested in seeing a system of this sort and how it presents itself as a transfer function.